So today I would like to talk about borderline personality disorder and people pleasing and how that relates to cognitive functions and personality. So first off, what functions would be involved in these two maladaptive personality presentations? Well, first, in borderline personality disorder, you'd see a over-dependence on the FITE axis and a relative um, low execution and usage of the TIFE axis uh, such that it's non-compensatory, leaves a person asymmetrically in favor of the FITE axis. And on the other end, with people-pleasing, you would see the opposing dynamic, where an individual is overly invested in the TIFE axis and under-invested in the FITE axis. Now, how do those two things relate in terms of the presentations of individuals in the world? If an individual is overly concerned with the FITE axis, well, minimizing their concern for the TIFE axis, you end up with an individual who presents as over-concerned with their own needs, wants, desires. And the need to impose those needs, wants, and desires on the objects and people in their world. They're overly concerned with the object patterns and what those patterns might mean. And they'll demand that the individuals and objects in their world um, stay within the boundaries of those defined patterns that they recognize as safe. This makes a very demanding individual who's likely to make requests of the others around them, or demands, or uh, even impose directives, to the extent uh, that other individuals find this quite difficult to manage. And eventually, conflict erupts. Now when that conflict erupts, and once that individual, hyperdependent on the FITE axis, is unable to continue imposing their desires and needs, on the other individuals in their life, you'll see them reluctantly um, embrace the TIFE axis momentarily so as to afford enough positive rego regard for themselves again to restructure the relationship, re-engage with the person and build rapport once more until they feel safe again to go back to imposing that F-I-T-E axis and ignoring the T-I-F-E one. For whatever reason, and I don't want to speculate too much about why an individual would do this, but I suspect it has to some degree to do with um, an intolerance for T -E, or F-I or excuse me, T-I and F-E in their homes or from their caregivers or from the individuals that they relied upon in their formative years. There's probably lots of other ways that that could play out. But on the other end of the spectrum, with the people-pleasing axis, or the people-pleasing end of that axis, you end up with people who are over-reliant on TIFE and under-reliant and under-utilizing FITE in their lives, and you end up with a person who is hyper-adaptive to the objects and people around them. They first ask what is the status of the objects and people around them, and how might I adapt myself so as to most favorably present and, um, and relate with those objects and people in their life. Now, they'll do this for sometimes very long periods of time. But inevitably, people get used to this, and people will continue to place demands on the individual with this people-pleasing attitude until this individual is stuck with no recourse except to finally embrace their FI, TE axis, and impose their needs, desires, and wants back on the individuals around them and often, because there's 
obviously some strong emotion that has caused them to repress this set of functions in the first place. When this does arise, it comes with rage, spontaneous rage. It could be quite violent, uh, quite explosive, because it's been repressed, 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 and it comes up, explodes. And then finally, they'll impose upon the individuals around them boundaries and needs and desires and wants and whatever it may be, and they'll do that until they reach a sense of security once again, and they relax and let go of those scary FITE functions and go back to being hyper-reliant on their TIFE axis. Now, if this be the case, and we have an idea of what is actually at play here, and what the missing component might be for an individual who is behaving in one of these maladaptive ways, well, what should tip them off that it's time to make an adjustment? Well, obviously, if you get to the point where the borderline person is suddenly having to express tons of FE and love bomb another individual to try to revive the relationship that they've destroyed with their hyper-demanding nature, uh, obviously that's gone too far and they need to do it. They already have recognized that and that's what they're in the process of doing. Likewise, if the people-pleasing individual has gotten to the point where they are exploding uh, with anger um, in the face of the people around them, then they too have recognized that this has gone too far. And even if it is not their conscious belief that it's the right thing to do, their very nature has imposed upon them the need to resurrect their FITE axis. So it's not that, it's obviously before that. So how can an individual tell when they're going too far in one direction or the other? Well, anytime you have a conflict with another person, or when you impose a want against another person's wish, wishes or desires, or they impose one against your wishes and desires, there's a certain degree of tension right, that exists there. Now, if the individuals in that relationship are healthy and they can come to um, a degree of uh, concession between them and arrive at an appropriate outcome that they both agree upon, that tension should dissipate, right? If that tension doesn't dissipate and if that ten tension lingers, when there is no conflict that's existing in that relationship. That's your cue that there has been too much um, avoidance of one of these ends of this axis. It's pretty easy to know which end an individual might be on. You know, if this is you, you just ask yourself, well, how many of my needs and desires have I let go? How many times have I demanded that they be met? And this might take some genuine insight on your part, because you may think that an individual's request um, without their demand is an imposition upon you um, such that it's a concession for you to agree. And likewise, you might believe that just because you didn't pay attention to your own uh, desires in a situation, that likewise you too have made a concession um, to the other. Well, that might not be the case. So you have to ask yourself, have I been taking more pennies out of the tray or putting more in? And when you do that, you have to think of genuine equivalencies or is closest to genuine equivalencies as you can get in terms of behavioral reciprocity and not covert contracts and unmet expectations that weren't voiced or unrealistic expectations that were voiced but that nobody could ever meet. And you have to actually take the time to parse those things apart and then find out, well, if I fall on this end of the spectrum, perhaps I might be able to resolve this tension inside myself by embracing the other. So find out 
Am I hyper-reliant on FITE? Do I need to impose myself on the people around me? And if they're unwilling to participate in my frame, structure, and context that I impose upon them, does that frustrate me and bring me into a sense of lingering and long-lasting tension? If it does, then you're likely towards the borderline end of the spectrum. Not necessarily that you're clinically, you know, diagnosable with borderline personality disorder, only that there's an asymmetry between the roles that these functions are playing in your life. And conversely, if you find that you're never imposing your will, you're becoming resentful towards others, and that's that lingering tension that you're feeling in your life uh, because your needs aren't being met, well, then it's very likely that you've neglected the FITE end of that access and you need to resurrect that and impose your boundaries on the world. Now, that's difficult for an individual who has one of these maladaptive strategies at play in their personality. Otherwise, they'd have already done it. But what's more difficult is not addressing it. Because while it's going to be really hard for you to live a more symmetric life in terms of your application of FITE and TIFE, what's going to be much harder is the absence of that and the effect it has on the people around you and the way that that effect becomes mirrored and reflected back to you and how it alienates you from others. Because inevitably, whether it's BPD, which looks much more conflict-oriented, or it's hyper-reliance on people-pleasing, in the end, both become alienating. Either alienating you from yourself, in which case that alienates you from others because nobody wants to be with a non-person in relationship with somebody who doesn't exist, whether as a friend, a romantic partner, business partner, there's no trust there. Or, on the other end, if you are constantly demanding that people abandon themselves to meet your needs, people will flee from you just out of self-preservation. So think that through. See where you fall on that. I'm not implying that everybody out there has one of these characteristics or the other to such an extent that it's a maladaptive um, emergency in their life because the vast majority of people don't. But everybody is slightly asymmetric in this way. There are very few people who truly fall right in the center. So I hope with a little bit of self-reflection and analysis, you might be able to figure out where you fall on that spectrum and how you might better apply the opposing end of it uh, so that you can be healthier in yourself and in your relationships to others. All right, thanks.